devil's head. Step on the devil's head. Come on, do that little party, get step on the devil's head. Let me see a little movie I was doing here. Come on, everybody. Everybody stand up. And then everybody just shout, step on the devil's head. Keep standing. Come on, let's see that little move again. Do it. Do it again. All right, everybody do it. Come on, step on the devil's head. Step on the double head. All right, give him a hand clap. Musicians a hand clap. I, man, I, I tell you those, those young people are so creative, so much energy. I just happened to look down there and see them. I guess they did they little move, you know. And it's, it's a good move. I like that. Stand to your feet all over the building. We're not going to be before you long. We do give God all the glory and all the honor. I thank God for all of your prayers that prayed for us while we was traveling. Also, thank you for all of your congrats. Open your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. Due to time, may not get through with everything, but I do want to give you the gist of everything. I want to encourage you while you are turning to 1 Peter chapter 4. I want to encourage all of you, never give up on God. Never give up on God. I don't care what storm is going on. What you have to understand is that you are not off limits. You're not off limits. And, I, you know, God just wants someone to know that. Want all of us to know that. You're not off limits. You're not off limits from lies, you're not off limits from sickness, illness, attacks from the enemy. You are not off limits. But what God wants you to know is that he's greater than anything that you're facing or come against you. God is greater. And you have to understand is that when these kind of things come, remember I talked about it last week, Daniel chapter 6. Uh, may have talked about it in Bible study, not sure. But one thing you have to understand is that through every opposition, and, and this is what I'll tell people most time we always say that um, every level you go to you meet a new demon and, and this is the reason why we never reach those levels because we think we at another level but we at the same levels because demons would not allow that's just like uh, opposing football teams they don't let you get to the goal line and hope to stop you from making a touchdown their responsibility and job is to stop you way before you even get in the red zone so what am I saying about that? The devil don't let you make it to the next level and then mess with you. He want to stop you right where you at because if you make it to the next level, that is an indication that you have been empowered by the word of God and you have made it and exceeded to that next level. Now, when you meet that next demon, it's not because you made it there. It's because there's another level that God want to take you to. And his responsibility is what he's trying to do. The devil is trying to stop you from getting there. So whatever you do, don't give up on God. Most people give up and walk away. And you know what? That's how leadership is defined. Leadership is not defined in how much you know, how educated you are, who you know, what you know, how much money you got, where you live, what you drive. Leadership is based on can you stand the storm? Because, see, if the leader cannot stand the storm, then everyone that is following the leader, when the storm comes, you're going to move and run because what leaders does, just like the captain of the ship, when the boat go down, baby, everybody can get out, but the captain stays on board. He sinks with the ship. Amen? 
So because that's his glory, that's his honor. He's honored. You watch what happened with that one ship. That captain didn't get no honor. He didn't get no glory. What he got is a lawsuit and jail time because he jumped off the ship and left everybody on there. That's what leadership is all about. Leadership says you go down with the ship, but you make sure that you save everybody. And you may be dead, but guess what? Your name will ring in glory. Isn't that what Jesus did? He went down with the ship all by himself. But guess what? Everybody was saved, all of us. And his glory is still reigning. So that's what it's all about. If you can't handle people talking about you, if you can't handle people lying on you, if you can't handle, you're not ready for leadership. In other words, what you need to do is just sit down and be quiet and wait till that time come. Amen? Because what leaders does, they don't entertain what people say or think. They stay focused. Amen? Now, God just wanted me to drop that. I don't know. Maybe that was for me. Maybe it was for some of you. I don't know. But I think we all can use it. Amen? First Peter chapter 4. What, we, what I want to talk to you about, I want to start off right there. Do not be controlled by the past. Because this is why most of God's people is still in bondage. is because we're being controlled by our past. Either what someone knew about you or either what you did or what you said or what you didn't do or what you didn't say. Tell somebody to get over there already. That's the past. Yeah, pastor, you say it's the past, but he or she just did this this morning. I don't care. You should have dealt with it this morning. It's in the past now. Yeah, but Pastor, you don't know. I got something that I want to tell you about, you know, Elder Ramsey, you know, that what he did last month ago. Hey, stop it. I don't want to hear it. Why? You should have told me when it happened last month. It's in the past now. I don't care. Amen? First Peter chapter 4. Look at verses 1 through 6. You may be sit you may sit down, sit down, because I just want to deal with verse by verse. For as much then as Christ had suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time pass, everyone shout, the time pass of our life may suffice us to have worked the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, reveling parties, and abdominal idolatries, wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess or ride speaking evil of you. Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead that they might be judged according to men in the flesh but live according to God in the spirit. All right, everyone shout again, do not be controlled by the past. See, so you have to understand something that people who have been born again through the uh, faith of Christ don't live their life in the past. Amen? Amen. They don't live their lives in the past. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. And you're going to find what Peter says here. You might want to keep your Bibles open too with me. Uh, bring, uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God which lives and stays forever. So you need to understand the past is the past and you got to quit letting it control you. The past should not have no power. Because the Bible says when Jesus died for our sins, he died for those sins in the past, the present, and the future. So our sins have no power over us. That's why I love the way Paul put it. Paul said, it is no longer I, but it is the sin that dwells in me. It dwells in me, but it does not control me. Why? Because I'm not controlled by my past. Because my future is much brighter. So people who have been born again through faith in Christ, they are not controlled by that. Should not allow the old life to control them. Stop letting it control you. Now you, you meet people and the first thing they bring up is that what you did in the past. 
You can't let the past control you. The past is just that. It's the past. I don't care how much marijuana you smoke, how much crack you did, how much alcohol you smoke, how many men, women you slept with. I don't care what you did. It is the past. And if you're ready and strong enough to let go of the past and move to the future, then the past does not control you. But if you're still walking around in shame and in guilt and defeated, it's because you allow your past to control you. Don't let someone, see watch this, your past can also blackmail you. Because people, when they know something about you, they'll try to extort things from you and have you nervous. You know, it's always say, let it come. Let it drop where it drop at by. I will not let my past control me. Why? It's too much of mercy. It's too much of grace. It's too much of forgiveness. It's too much of love in my future. So what if everybody turned their back? I'm talking to somebody. So what if they turn their back on you and talk about you? It doesn't matter why. It's because only Christ has the ability and the power to place you in heaven or hell. Amen? So I would rather live this life being talked about by men, but my head held up high knowing that I've done all I can do to stand and that my future is bright. Amen? So don't let the old lifestyle control you. The past has been buried and they are new creatures in Christ because the Bible says if you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, when you give your life to him, when he was raised from the dead, then everyone that believed in him, trusted him, is also raised. And when you are raised, you are raised to a new life. Everyone shout, new life. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a new creature. My past has been buried. So furthermore, watch this. Life is too short to waste it on godless living. Especially when you realize that one day we will all stand before God. And the Bible said that everything that we have done, whether it's good or evil, we would have to give an account for it. So if we got to give an account to Christ, why do you waste your time giving an account to man? I love the way Jesus said when they looked at Jesus and they say, you are, he just looked at them and say, you say that I am. And walked on by his business. He didn't stand there to try to uh, discuss it or, or make them believe what he was saying. He just simply said, you say. In other words, let me bring it so we can understand it. It's people's opinions. Amen. And you should not let other people's opinion control you. Amen. Because your future is brighter. Here's the next point. Be serious about the present. Look at, uh, first of all, I want you to, to, to look at uh, uh, verse 7 through 11. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 through 11. Watch this. But the end of all things is at hand. And you all believe that? The end of all things is at hand. You can put that in any respect that you want to put it in, depending on where your faith is. If you want to say, I'm in poverty, you want to believe that the end of this poverty is over with, release your faith to it. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober, watch and pray. Sober. Now, Peter is not talking about someone that is drunk. What Peter is talking about here is being sober, keeping your mind from being just drunken with the things of the world like gossip and this and that and all of that. Keep your mind sober. Keep your mind ready. Keep your mind alert. Why? God is speaking like he never spoke before to the church. And the Bible says that he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Church. God is speaking to each one of us and we have to keep our minds sober that we can hear from God. You just have to tell people today is not a good day for gossip. Today is not a good day to express who you like and who you don't like. Today is not a good day to talk about what somebody did. You know what? Today is a good day to be alert to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Verse 8 he says, and above all things, have fervent charity. Charity is love among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitudes of sin. If you love someone, then love, you know what? Sin defines just how much love we really have. We can sing the song, oh, how I love Jesus, or I love Jesus. Or we, we use that word so loosely. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. But just as soon, you know what? Let, let me, can I just be real with the church? The church folks, we're going to have to all repent from being liars. 
for being liars. And, and we, we, we lie out of ignorance. So, you know, God probably will be merciful on us then. But you know what? Let me clear all the ignorance up right now, okay? Love is an action word. When you say love, it is an action word. When you love, you out of love. Not just with your mouth. Because here's what we say. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. But as soon as one of them fall, the first thing we do is judge them, condemn them, talk about them, drag their name through the church media, everything. You know what? And then when the world gets it, you can understand why sinners look and say, that's why I don't even go to church. You know, they can talk about each other more. Let me tell you something. The world don't know what's going on inside of the church, but what the church does, the church tells the world, and the world's like, you know one thing I give the Catholic Church credit for? They, when all of that scandal was going on, they said, you know what, no, we're not going to look at the government, and no, we're going to deal with our own affairs on the inside. So they kept the media out of it. They didn't let them know just what they wanted them to know. And that was, we're dealing with it. That's why the Bible says, don't take your brother to court. You should have enough of Jesus in you when you come together. And, re and we say we're ready for heaven. So watch this here. Use hospitality to one another without grudging. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So God has to be glorified in everything. Amen. So we have to be serious about the present, no matter how difficult life may be. There is a job to do. We must be faithful. Time to pray, as Peter said. Show love to the saints. Use your gifts and talents to serve others. And that's what we need to understand. The gift and the talent that God gave us, it is not for us. It is for us to serve others with it. Amen? You may be called by God to serve somebody that don't like you. You may be called by God to serve someone that who don't trust you. Whatever the case may be, you have to be faithful to the word of God. Amen. Touch a body and say, use your gift. So the Lord Jesus who gave us the ability will also give us the strength to be able to do what he wants us to do. Amen. How many of you clap your hands this morning and give God real glory? Because whatever God gave us, he gave us to use it for his glory. Because in everything, you may get the credit. God don't care about you getting the credit because he gets the glory. Amen? Here's the next point. Be prepared for the future. Look at verses 12 through 19. Look what he says. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. Watch this. As though some strange thing happened to you. This is where the church needs to really wake up and realize that every time something happens, we always associate it with the devil. But Peter says, beloved, think it not strange. It's not strange. Concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. That's what I love about God. We can say, oh, how I love you. But God always allows a test to come. To try you. To see how much you love him. In fact, Jesus puts it like this. He say, why do you call me Lord when you don't even do what I say? So how can I be your Lord and you don't obey me? Amen? Most of us, can, if, if we look at that statement, then we would have to say husband, wife, children, job, money, house, cars. is really our Lord because that's what we obey. Amen? Car running on empty, but not running right. Car said, you need to get me checked out. What are we going to do? Yes, car, I got to get you checked out. Why? You take me where I need to go. You make me look good because we don't have enough sense that we give looks to everything that we do. But when Jesus tells us what we need to do, we defile him. When he say love even your enemy, we want to hate our enemy. We want to fight. When he said that when your brother is caught in the fall, let them not spill to pray. We want to talk about them. We want to put them down. We want to cast them out. So is Jesus really our Lord? 
Or we get mad. I don't like the songs that AA singing, so I'm not going to sing. Why well, she got to lead all the songs? I'm not going to be in the choir. Baby, listen, it is not about you. If you want a spotlight, take it, put it up in your house, put it up off the street, but if not here, turn it on, shine it, stand out there in the front of it, and you can have whatever audience you want to have, because there is only spotlight in here is the spotlight that's on Jesus. And what, what this word say, let your light so shine before men that what? That they may see God's goodness or see your goodness and glorify God. So every spotlight, but because we are lights, it ought to illuminate and shine on the goodness of Christ. And when it shines on the goodness of Christ, he gets the glory. Amen. I can't put it like this young preacher yesterday down in Jacksonville, Florida. He had a real good message. He, and, and he was talking about how, because see, most people don't understand when you when we talk about God's glory, it simply means that there's a radiance or a light that shines bright. This is what Elijah said, uh, Isaiah said, when he was in the temple, he saw the glory of God fill the temple. He didn't see God, but he saw the glory. He saw the light. He saw the brightness because wherever God's glory is, it brings brightness, it brings light. So whenever we see in our lives, when God gets the glory, and, so, and I know it's a good common purpose that we normally say, I give all glory to God, but we need to see that glory radiating in your life. Amen? Because that's what happened. But my way Brother Omar put it, he said that his little brother, and this is all credit to Brother Omar if he's watching, he said that every time his little brother would get into trouble, he would talk a whole lot of noise but really couldn't fight. And he said he wondered that every time that when he, when he got into this trouble and all these guys would just walk away from him, said because he would be standing behind him and his brother, uh, little brother never knew he was standing there, but he would be standing in the distance. So he was talking about the shadow, casting the shadow. And he said that, you know, whenever the shadow shines on you, you see the shadow in the front, you see it in the back, you see it on the side, on both sides. So he said that they really wasn't afraid, I'm going through it real quick. They wasn't afraid of his little brother. It was the shadow they saw that his little brother didn't see, which was him standing behind his little brother. So in essence, what he's saying is that when we hide ourselves in the shadow of the Almighty, then God radiates over us. His shadow shine before us to say, you don't have to fight, Brother Omar said. And he says, shadow shines behind us to say, I got your back. And then the shadow on the side of us said, I'm walking right with you in all of this. So when we got God's glory, his glory radiates on us. Because let me tell you something, the devil don't care how much you sit there and holler in the name of Jesus. I'm a child of God. You know what? Because if it's just words with no faith, he don't care. Okay, can we get a little bit more sarcastic with it? Even Jesus said, listen, that's not so impressive. Why? He said, even demons believe. So it ain't about what you believe. The demons believe also. And watch this. He says, and when they believe, they tremble at the name of Jesus. So that means I have to do more than just believing. I have to have some action. I have to stand bold. I have to let the glory of God just radiate. How do you do that? When they talk about you, love them. Why? That's the radiance of God. Love it. When they put you down, love them anyway. The Bible says, blessed are ye. When men shall say all manner of evil against you and shall revive you. For greater is your reward in heaven. Tell somebody, please, it's about the reward. So watch this. Let me go on. He says rejoice. And I'm about, I'm about to come to the end of this. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. It's, it's rest upon me. The glory, the spirit of God, the glory of God rests upon you. There's that light. It radiates. That's why you don't have to focus on the devil. Why? Because God covers you in his glory. And when God covers you in his glory, his light shine in darkness. So David say, yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death. In other words, death may be there, it's just a shadow. I shall not feel. Why? Because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. David knew that God had him covered. If you know God has you covered, can you clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you? In all that we've been through, God been covering us. 
in all that we have got, he has still covered us. Even when we didn't give him glory, yet because of his investment in us, he still protect us. Amen. Because at the end of your life, tell your neighbor, at the end of your life, God will get the glory. He's going to get it one way or another. You can be dead. God will still get his glory for your dead life. Amen. So watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing on to a close. Verse 15 says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other man's matters. See, when folks bring you something, you got to know how to turn away from that. Tell them I got too much time. I got too much of God's glory. You know, in other words, what, 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 are you, what are you getting ready to tell me? Let's just pray about it. I don't even want to know. Let's just pray about it. Let's just let God get the glory in this situation. Why? Because in anything that we do, we're going to mess it up. Remember what Peter said earlier, you're going to be tried. You're going to be tried. Can God trust you with truth? You know what? Can God trust you with love? Can God trust you with happiness? Can God trust you with, with joy? Can, see, it's all about what God can trust you with. Amen? Because see, God don't just give you joy like you at some supermarket. He want to know if he can trust you even if you can't pay your rent. Will you still show the joy of the Lord? Why? Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord and this is my strength unto salvation. So can God trust you when he walk away from you? Can God trust you when you have nothing? That's what it's all about. It's giving him the glory. Not coming with a sad face. Sometimes I don't like to hear people talk about all that old sad stuff. About what somebody is doing and what somebody said. So what? Who are you, baby? They talked about Jesus. The reason why I can say that now is because my pastor told me the same thing. Man, I just go to him and say, you know, they, they, you, they talk, talk. I was mad. I was ready to tell him off. He said, sit down. Let me ask him, who do you think you is? And I looked at him, you know. I didn't say nothing because I didn't know if that was a loaded question. And then the way he said it, it caught my attention because he didn't laugh and say, sit down, Johnny. Well, he looked at me like he was upset and pointed his finger and said, sit down. Now, who do you think you is? Don't you know that Jesus said in this very book that the servant is no greater than the master? Who do you think you are? If they talked about Jesus, they don't talk about you. They spit on you. Do you know what they did to Jesus? And yet he didn't complain. So who do you think you are? That learned me to be quiet. I'm no greater than the master. Whatever they did to him, the Paul said that the suffering that we go through is nothing compared to what God has planned for us. So watch this. He said, if you suffer, let none of you suffer as a murderer. In other words, don't kill nobody, don't steal. You know, now sometimes we're guilty of things. And we don't suffer for everything that we're guilty of. But if you have to suffer, make sure it's for righteousness and not for what you did. In other words, what that song we see every time a brother will come on is that don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Y'all remember that album, Beretta? Not the young people, but the older people remember it. So you know you got to learn is that whatever you do, be man or woman up to own up to it. You know, don't, you ain't got to argue about it. That's why I like the court system. When you choose not to testify, you use your rights. And you just say, yes, sir, I'm guilty. And that's the end of it. Give me my sentence. Let me start my time because it ain't no sense going through all of this. So that's what it is. That's what I love about Jesus. He just went on and didn't argue with the point because he knew what he was done. But he did not do anything wrong. Amen. Now some of us is being attacked by the devil is because we allowed him to do it. Why? We have done some things to let him do it. But can I make you happy right now? And I may, I'm not going to make you happy with a hoop or none of that. I'm going to make you happy with some words. That even if you did something to cause it, guess what? Start rejoicing. Why? It's because God's anger does not last long. He'll deliver you out of it. That's why I run up for God to deal with me and not men. Why? When God deal with you, he deal with you, that's the end of it. But what do we do? We lag on, lag on. Every time you get mad about something, oh yeah, I remember what you did too. You know, and then when we really want to get it, we'll get in front of everybody and say, yeah, but she ain't tell you this. She ain't tell, you know what? Tell somebody, let it go. 
I don't know, maybe the cartoon can get the y'all better than Jesus. Maybe y'all need to sing the song, let it go, let it go, let it go, y'all, you know, I don't know. But, but if you do what the Bible says, forget about it. Let it go. Don't let it get into you. Let your past go. Yet, in verse 16, he says, Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. It's okay to, to suffer as a Christian. Why do these saints you have to understand? Because you're saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Spirit and does not exempt you from people lying on you. It does not exempt you from the devil what? Trying to crucify you. Look what Jesus told Peter. Satan want to do no more than to sit you as we. But don't you know that God has us in his hand? How many of you know that God is greater than your enemy? <clears throat> if that's the case, then why do you let the things your enemy say and do to you bother you? You ought to be, you ought to be like Stephen. You ought to be able to look up and say, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. Why? Because when you crucify me, that's what you ought to be telling. You know what, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they don't. Why? Because when you crucify me, you're crucifying purpose. And my purpose on this earth is to embrace you into the glory of God. So when you kill me off, you stop the glory of God from radiating in your life. Tell somebody and touch somebody, I need you. Tell somebody that I need you. Look what he says in verse 17. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous sacredly be saved, oh, that saint slip. He say, if the righteous sacredly be saved. So we can get happy and say, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost on my way to heaven. If you are, it is by a thread because notice what he said, if the righteous are, God, oh God, thank you. You know what, I could close right here. God has a standard that he would not lower for no one. If you fall, God don't lower his standard to pick you up. He keep a standard up there and pick you up or tell you to get up and then try it again. That's why the Bible says a man will fall, good man will fall seven times, but he'll get back. I thank God for every time that I fail, he never lowered his standard down to where I was because if he had done that, guess what? I would have stayed down there where I fallen, but because his standards are so high and because I wanted to reach out and grab his standard, I had to get up out of my mess. I had to get up out of my junk and still reach for it because why? God is a good God. He's not a second time giver God. God is a God that gives many chances. Somebody ought to shout thank you. I thank God for his standards. When he say live at the standards, that's what he means. Glory to God. He never said you won't fall. James said, brethren, count it all joy when you fall into these such divers to why? Because when you get up out of them, and you know what I'm glad about God, sometimes God won't get you out. He'll let others get you out. Because they'll see your shame, and they'll see everything, but when it comes down to it, it'll make you just trust in Him. Come on, clap your hands and tell God thank you. So watch this, and I'm not going to finish, I'm not going to finish this, but I just want to tell you this point. A fiery trial was it about to come to the church that Peter was talking about? Peter told his readers, and what he's telling us today, to expect it. Use it as an opportunity to witness for Christ. And in all things, seek the glory of God. We should seek God's glory in everything. The trial came under the Roman Emperor Nero, who accused the church, the Christians, for uh, burning Rome. And the church today faces persecution just as we are preparing we're still facing persecution the church is is under attack by the enemy the church is under attack by non-believers and you know what we're so busy fighting against one another till we don't see the enemy is lining up to take us that's why our paul said that we have to be careful you gotta let all that stuff go we are under attack when you see the stuff that's going on around you we are under attack. And guess what? We don't run. We don't hide. We take front line 
to everything. Why? Because he has empowered us to be in his army. He has empowered us to be in his body. And we should take the first step of everything. The world is going to soon hit the church to get answers to what's really going on. Are you ready to answer it? Are you ready to step up to the plate? You know, we got killing going on in our schools. We got killing going on in our neighborhoods. What is the church doing? The church is busy talking about what somebody wore or what somebody had on or what she said, what he said, what he did. Tell somebody, shut up. It's time out for all of that. It's time out to start giving a solution. It ain't about all that about her husband left her. Shut up. Tell me how we can get her husband back home. It's time out for that. I get, I get sick sometimes. You know where I get my peace at? Among sinners. Because when you sit among sinners, guess what? They are not discussing the sins of other sinners. They're just being happy. If you don't believe me, try going up on a corner where you see some drunkards at. And just go there. Just walk up there and just walk on the corner and just sit there and say, hey, brother, how you doing? And just have your seat right there among the drunkards. You know what they're going to be talking about? Not nobody else's business. They're going to be talking. They're going to take that bottle and they're going to say, you want to hear it? And they're just going to keep talking about life period. Because they have been just doing it. But you know what the church is doing? We're, we're, we're in the body of Christ. We're laughing. We're talking. We're rejoicing. We're dancing. And then before we can get out of the sanctuary, come here. I can't believe. Did you see what she, people that have the nerves to come into God. Sinners ain't talking about that. You know what? When they, when they, when they see a woman wear a short dress, you know what they say? Woo! Girl, you look good. What the church folks say, oh, she ought to be ashamed. She going to hell. Or oh, they look in the world and drunk us in there. Hey, baby, you sure look good today, sweetheart. You say that in the church, oh, he's just a flirty old dirty man. This is the kind of stuff we are doing. The world is not attacking us. We, we are attacking ourselves from within. He preached too long. She preached too long. But you go sit among the sinners. They have to sit there for hours. And you know what? They were joining in the conversation. So now I know what's going on. The reason why the church say they preach too long. Because you don't know what we're talking about. The Bible say, if this gospel be hidden, it's only hidden from those that don't know or believe. So I found in the body of Christ, we have a whole lot of non-believers. You go sit down with the sinner man, and he'll sit there for hours, drunk, and listen to you talk about the Bible, and can have a conversation with you. I put my money on a drunkard. Against any Christian who thinks that they're so high that they know more scripture than you and they can apply more scripture than you. Because you know what they'll say, Reverend? You know, I ain't coming to church. I'm all messed up. Let me give you this couple of dollars. Put it in there for me. They live in our principles. And guess what? Give. How? What else? What else? And then guess what? Somebody come in. Hey, brother, can you spam me a dollar? I just want to get a beer. Here you go, man. The saints are giving, but we're giving grudgingly, but ain't nobody giving us nothing. The Bible say, give and this shall be given unto you. Good measures, press down, shake it together, shall me. We still say, God don't give me. When God say, give and men are giving to your bosom, what have you given? You don't think you're doing something good because you pass by. Oh, I seen this old beggar on the corner. Here you go. I feel good now today of Christian and I gave him $2. But guess what? He just used the principle on you because he took all that money and we gave it to somebody else. And he used the principle on you. Now you're giving it to his bosom. So that's what we do, church. We need to clean up within ourselves. Not in the other person's business, but we need to clean up our own self. That's what it's all about. I don't care about who was drinking. 
If some of us be honest, it all depends on what they drink and some of us might want to drink. After you get through dealing with a whole lot of folks with a whole lot of problems. Now I know some of y'all are looking at me saying, what pastor? Now I'm saying, you know what? The doctor that operates on you, 90% of the time, he's drunk. The pilot that had flying your plane, you know what? When I got on the plane yesterday, and when I was walking, I observed everything. And I'm not first class. You get, you get your drinks and everything. But I saw the stewardess mixing up a drink. What nobody even said yet. So that must be the one thing, the first drink we have. The time that they bring the little drink wagon through. And they start at first class first. And then they want to go to the first class. And we want to see it. They never start to be for the captain. So I get it. And that's all right because guess what? He got all of us on plan. So I don't know if that's a group of one to be, you know, from the drink or what. But whatever it is, it make you depend on Jesus. It make you call on Jesus. If you think folks were not praying when that little doom happened, I heard brother, woo -hoo, you know, Then it got quiet. I knew then everybody was praying. Because saints won't pray out loud. We don't want them to know who we are. But we're going to be sitting there, Lord, you know, you know what you hear me of that sin to Lord, I don't know. Look like I'm, look like this plane may go down. If we go down, Lord, you know, let me put my phone off for flight mode and put it on location. So that's what I was thinking, you know. So, so if we go down, they can at least find us somewhere. You know, so you know, it will make you call on Jesus. Lord knows if it would have took one more dip, I would have stood up and said, let's have a prayer meeting in here. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. Man, I was gripping that seat so hard when I let it go, my hand was wet. I didn't want to show nothing because I didn't want the wife. And then I'm talking about my daughter going to text her and say, oh, we, said we had a little turn. Oh, hold past his hand because he probably scared. We all were scared. We just didn't want to show it. So what I'm telling you all, forget about the past. Man, your future is so bright. Come on, come on. Your future is so bright. Joy. Live in the joy of God. Live in the right now of God. Quit letting all that other stuff get you down. You'll stay looking young. See, I got myself in trouble. If you match me up, Brother Richard, he, he's 50. I'm 50. He's only a day older than me. His birthday on May the 3rd, mine's May the 4th. Look at him and look at me. Tell me what the problem is. I let all this stuff from the church worry me. Look what he gets you. Look at him. He don't have a gray spot on his face or his head. I don't know if he died or cut or whatever. He don't let his beard grow, but something going on. And most of my stuff come worried about him. That was deacon right there. And all the rest of y'all. No, I'm just, just joking. I'm just joking. But you know what? Live life to the fullness with joy. Because we may be out of here tomorrow. We don't know. We don't know. Everything is happening. One day cruise ship just sunk. So stuff is going on around us. It's time for us to make up our mind now. Listen, but before we go any further, as we get ready for communion, because I know some of you all saying Bishop kickoff was at 12 noon. 